What's up guys? Welcome back to Introduction to Programming using C++. My name is Alex Louie. Today I'm going to show you how to find the max value in an array. If you haven't already, please look at my video on how to find the sum and the average of an array of elements in an array because we're going to talk about the same concepts here uh, except that we're now trying to find one max value. We're trying to now, previously we did a calculation, now we're actually just trying to find one element in the array. So we're going to use the same example from the previous videos where I have an array full of test scores. If we look at this array that's full of test scores, we're going to have eight elements ranging from 0 to 7. From 0 to 7. Now, as I go from 0 to 7, I have all these test scores that I've entered in previously and we're going to try and find the max. What is the max value here? As you see the array and one big complete picture, you're going to find that the max value is 95. I ask you the question, how did you find the max value just eyeballing the array? Did you go from left to right, compare any values? Did you just look at and try to find the highest number just eyeballing it? Your mind does it so quickly that you probably didn't notice, but you still have to scan the array element by element to find the max value. Now, you're also probably doing some comparisons in there, but again, you don't notice this because you do this subconsciously. Your brain is accustomed to already finding. If I ask you the question, well, find the max value, you're going to say, okay, I know that I'm going to find the, uh, the biggest number in here as I find it, and I scan through the array quickly. Okay, and again, you, you scan it so quickly that your mind doesn't even notice. You do this almost subconsciously. If I asked you to find the min value, it would be the same way. You'd say, okay, I'm going to try and find the lowest value, and you have the array all uh, ahead of you as one big picture. Now, the problem with this is, is that the computer, when you're coding this, is not the same way. As I mentioned before, when you're trying to find the max value or the min value or any element in an array, you don't have the big picture ahead of you. You actually have to go through the array one element by element. And I showed the example. I'm going to use the same example as last time. We're at the zeroth element, and we are going to set our max value 70. Why? Because what's our current max? We don't know. We don't know what our current max is. So what we do is we say, okay, the only value that I know so far is 70. So I'm going to assume that this is my max value. So we'll set max to 70. We still have other elements to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next element. When we're at the next element, our max value is still 70. But now we come across this element that's called 85. Okay. And we asked we have to ask a question well is 85 greater than my current max well, what's my current max well we decided initially that our current max is going to be the zeroth element because we don't really know anything else and it is our current max i mean it is greater than our current max so 85 is greater than max so this is going to be our new max now am i done think about that question am i done so i found the max value this is a new max value am i finished the answer is no, because we still have to go through the rest of the elements in the array in case there are other values that are greater than 85. So let's go to the next element. And we do it we do this in an iterative process. So we're gonna ask, is 90 greater than our current max? Well, what's our current max? 85, right? Because it was that was a previous max that we set to. So is 90 greater than max? Yes, it is. Now this is our new max. Next element is a 30. Is 30 greater than our max, which is 90? No, it's not. So our max stays as at 90. Then we go to our next element. We come to a number 95. Is 95 greater than max? Yes, it is. So we're going to set this as our new max. Now, are we done? No, we're not. We're still at the fourth element. We need to go all the way up to the seventh because we're going from zero to seven our eighth element we go to this number 82 is 82 greater than max no it's not so max stays the same 
How about 77? Is that greater than max? No, it's not. That stays the same. And is 62 greater than max? No, it's not. So what's our final max? Well, our max value didn't change since we changed it to 95. And that will be your final max value because this is our last element that we have in the array. Now, how do we represent that code-wise? It's very, very simple. Okay, very, very simple. We're going to do the same thing we did last time where we populate an array. And then we will find the max by iterating it one by one, element by element. So in this particular section, we've done this before, I'm going to enter my scores. In this particular section, we're going to start with the max as scores of zero because I want to own, I want to make my max the first element in the array. That's what I want to do. I want to make my max the first element in the array because we don't have any, anything else. Okay. Now, as we go through the array, okay, we are going to check if the element that I'm currently at is greater than max. Remember from my slide. Remember from my slide, we have to compare. We have to make sure that if it is greater than max, then that will be our new max. And that's what we're doing here. So as we go through each element, we compare it to the max. If it's greater than max, we store it as our new max. With scores of i, because we're going to go through each index, okay, starting at 0. We actually could start at 1, because our, our, max, our current max is the 0th element. But that's okay. We can start at zero. It's fine. And then once I run this, our new our max will be obviously 95. So let's actually run it. As we run the program, I enter my scores. And there it is. So my max test score is 95. It is 95. Here's a question. What if I was trying to find the min value? What if I was trying to find the min value? wouldn't be that much different except you're going to have a different variable from called min and instead of saying if it's greater than max you're going to actually see if it's smaller than the minimum value and eventually you'll get the minimum value why don't you try this as an exercise and I'll put up a video on how to find the min okay I hope you picked up on how to find the max and you're getting better at iterating through arrays if you have any questions, you can always email me at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com or you can catch me at parttimeadjunct.com. Uh, thanks for listening. Happy programming.